Hey, Big Agitator here. We're talking today about case preparation. It's really best to clean your case in a tumbler. These other two here have not been cleaned at all, and you can see there's a lot of garbage on them. And the ones over here are after the tumbler. And you can see they've got a nice shiny finish. And if you do it right, they can really actually look just like brand new shells. When you have a really clean case, it's much easier to examine for damage. You want to make sure there are no cracks running this way. What will happen after a few firings is sometimes they'll tend to split. And that's kind of inevitable. But um, the minute you see uh, evidence of cracking, just toss the case. And as far as this lip, you can uh, trim that down to get a smooth end. But with pistol brass, it's not quite as essential. Um, they tend to hold up really well, so you don't usually have to do much. This has been fired a couple times, and it's not sharp, and it's a nice, clean uh, ridge all the way around. Other thing you want to watch out for is head separation. Now what you'll see, you'll start to see cracking running around the case, going this way. And if you see any of that, you need to toss your case. Um, maybe even if you see a couple that are like that, toss the whole lot, because... What happens is um, that whole head can separate. The other thing you want to check is make sure your primers have not bulged out. And if they have, that is usually an indication of excessive pressure, so you might be loading a little too hot. So keep these things in mind. And the other thing is, um, for a real purist, you know, you want to make sure the case is a uniform length. And here they show you the Maximum length of the case is 1.285 inches. We got our cases all cleaned and inspected. They all passed the test. Now we got to fill them up. When you're looking up loads, beware. With a lot of revolver cartridges, oftentimes you can find load data for rifles, for firing these projectiles in rifles. Now you want to be aware in this case that um, it's been specified what kind of a barrel you're using. Now with this load data, you can see they say a 5.7 inch barrel. To those of you who are firing semi-automatic, you're probably not going to run into this ever. But for revolvers, keep that in mind. I'm going to look up what kind of load I'm going to use based on the kind of powder I'm using. So in this case, I'm using Alliant powders. And in my particular scenario, I'm running Unique, which is a generally good all-around powder. The bullet diameter is 4.430 inches. So when you're shopping for bullets, that's what you need to look for. In my case, between 0.429 and 0.432 is acceptable, depending on whether you're using jacketed or lead bullets. Now, in this particular case, we're using a jacketed bullet, and we're going to find, okay, now we're looking this up by powder, we're also looking it up by bullet. I know I want to use a 240 grain jacketed soft point, which is JSP, so we've got JHC, JHP, JHP, and it's the wrong weight, keep going, 240 grain jacketed soft point, and we're going to want to run unique powder, so we're going to look at the load, now over here we have 10.3 grains of powder, something you want to look out for with these reloading manuals, if you can thumb through them before you buy, that's probably a good idea, in this case they list starting loads, you want to start with a certain number of grains, but they're not showing that here. And then all they're showing is maximum loads. So what you really want to do is, obviously, don't start with a maximum load. Usually you start 10% below that. The max load of 10.3 grains of unique. We're going to subtract 10%, which would leave us with 9.27 grains as a starting load. So we're going to load at that rate, see how it goes, and work up to the maximum over a couple of sessions. As far as a primer, we're going to use a Federal 150. Now I happen to know this is a non-magnum large pistol primer. I do happen to have the exact same kind, so I'm going to just run these and the load will be exactly what's in the book. But if you have a primer like this and you actually happen to have a different brand, just look it up on the internet if you want, but if, if you know that it's the same variety, in this case you know a non-magnum primer, uh, you'll be all set. The depth that the bullet is seated into the case determines how it's going to perform. And you'll notice with this loading manual they specify case overall length 
and what we're looking for is 1.585 inches. So when we seat that bullet, we're going to want to measure the final product, and we should get that number. The other thing is, now that I've chosen a load and a primer, etc., I'm going to write that all on a card. I'm putting the date, the type of bullet, etc. You can pause it if you want to read this. And what we end up with is, when we're done loading our rounds, we throw that note in the box with the rounds, so if they sit around for a year, we know what they are. And after I'm finished shooting all of them, what I'll do is I'll take a note on this card, whether I like the round, whether I think it needs to be more powerful, maybe more accurate, and then I'll toss this in a file with a ton of other ones of these. And if I'm trying to pick a load in the future, I can go back to the ones I liked and replicate them. Calibrating your scale. Now with this particular one, you have a ball that you can move to different positions. Make sure that's at zero. And your sliding scale, make sure it says zero grains. And up here you can see the tenths. And to get to zero tenths, you want a full solid white line on a zero, and then partial lines on the nine and the one. Now, as that moves ahead, you'll see that all these lines move together and whatever one is the most intense is the number that you're on. So we make sure that's a zero, we lock it down, we make sure this has all been wiped down, this pan, and don't wipe it down with any oil or anything sticky, just wipe it with a dry cloth. Now you'll see that that's not quite at zero. Now we just want to adjust this knob. There's a little adjuster screw up here, we're just going to adjust it just a whisker, and you'll see that makes a difference. Now we're ready to set it to the right amount of weight. We want 9 and 2.7 tenths for our load. So what we're going to do is set it, we're going to round up because this is 10% reduced, we're going to go a little above that. We're going to go to 9.3 grains. When you're setting this, uh, I know we found a load, but I wanted to emphasize that you do want to cross-reference that load, whatever you're going to run. Uh, cross-reference that with some other publications and make sure that it's not um, outrageous. So we've got nine grains and three tenths of a grain. You see how the line is heaviest on the three. And this is at zero. And these are tens, so that's at zero. We're ready to start loading. Okay, we've got our dribbler all loaded up and I got it all primed up so we get some powder falling out. Now we're just going to use a scoop in this case. We got the reloading bench all wiped down. We've got a clean tray here with our primers. Now you're not supposed to handle these with your hands, but I have really dry hands and I don't touch the inner part of the primer. And eventually I am going to get a safety prime feeder so I don't have to handle the primers at all. Got our bullets all lined up, counted out, got our powder ready to go. Let's start loading. One thing to keep in mind is that primers, if one goes off, it can set off all the ones around it and they can mass detonate. So I only put out about 10 primers at one time when I'm doing my loads. I put them on a clean tray and that definitely reduces the likelihood of a mishap. Knock the primer out all the way up. Put a new primer in the priming cup. Down we go, prime by pushing back. Now we're going to go up and flare. Now we got to measure our powder. Dribble in one little piece. That was one piece of powder. And we are bingo. You're really supposed to have a powder funnel in here, but I'm very good at uh, getting all the powder in. If for some reason you don't get all the powder in, you have to start all over again. You have to dump out the case and basically start from scratch, measure a new batch. Go to our next station. There we have it, another finished round.
one thing else I want to mention while we're doing this is I'm wearing safety glasses the whole time. And the other thing I really emphasize is that powder funnels are cheap. So do as I say, not as I do. Um, get a powder funnel for the top of this thing. It's a lot better.